Sunday, February 28th, 2021, the second Sunday of Lent. Listen to him. In today's gospel, we hear God's voice from the heavens directing Peter, James, and John, Jesus' closest disciples, to listen to Jesus. We can use this reminder as well. Are we listening to him? How is Jesus speaking to us today? As we pray, as we hear God's word, as we celebrate this liturgy in memory of what he has done for us, let us listen to him. Please be mindful to remain socially distant and secure your masks. Also, please be careful as you move about the church and to silence your cell phone so we do not disturb this mass. Please let us greet our celebrant, Stan, Father Andrew. sisters in Christ. To prepare ourselves for this Eucharistic celebration, let us acknowledge our shortcomings, our failures and sinfulness, and beg God for pardon and mercy. inwardly by your word 
that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham. Here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by his thorns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in the place of his son. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did and not withholding me from your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies and in your descendants, all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my commandment. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over to us all, how will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us, who will condemn. Christ Jesus, it is who died, or rather was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves, and he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no fueler on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say. They were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them. From the cloud came a voice. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them. 
From the cloud came a voice. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. Brothers and sisters in Christ, today is the second Sunday of Lent. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. If we remember the gospel of the first Sunday of Lent, that is, last Sunday, began with the temptation of Jesus. That is the gospel of St. Mark. Mark 1, 12 to 15. That is, Jesus Christ was tempted. Temptation is inevitable, brothers and sisters. Jesus passed through temptation. We too, we are going to meet with temptations also. Anything, any person, any idea. Anything, any person, any idea. Taking us from the will of God. We are going to meet definitely with temptations. It is inevitable. They are not bad. They will surely come. But then we pray that we stand firm. The first reading today, Genesis account, Abraham's faith was put to the test. We are professing our faith and we are telling God how much we love him. That faith will be put to the test. Our love of God will be put to the test. We cannot escape it. The transfiguration today in the gospel reading is a glimpse of what you and I will be. Just little that Jesus Christ has shown us. It is a glimpse of what the future looks like. Definitely. That is our plan. That is the vision. That is the prayer that we continue to give glory to God. Jesus is on the way to Jerusalem, brothers and sisters. He's on the way to Jerusalem. And that is why he took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And we are told, who were told, his clothes became dazzling white. Elijah appeared to them along with Moses and they were conversing with Jesus. And with this experience, so beautiful, let us make three tents. One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Hmm. They hardly knew what to say. They were so terrified. Jesus is on the way to Jerusalem. What is he going to do in Jerusalem? He's going there for suffering, for death. And resurrection. He's going there to embrace suffering and death. He's going there to Jerusalem to give glory to God. To give glory. He could see it. Death is before him. He didn't turn back. He faced it. Brothers and sisters, these four weeks of Lent is a special period. Special period, or 40 days of Lent rather, is a special period for you and for me. Special period of, of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Special time for you and for me. And that is why it is very, very important to listen to him. 
We've talked about the temptation of Jesus. We've talked about Abraham's faith put to the test. We've talked about the transfiguration. And we've talked about what Jesus is going to do. Whose benefit? He's going to Jerusalem. Whose benefit? Whose benefit? It's for the love of you and me. Whose benefit? We don't like trouble. We run away from trouble. We run away from suffering. We run away from pain. And Jesus Christ saw it and is facing it. He's not turning back for the glory of his Father, for the benefit of humanity. And that is why we cannot do this. And God is giving his only begotten Son and is telling us today, be empowered. Be empowered. Because to listen to him is a big privilege. And it's a responsibility. We need to remind ourselves. Because we are listening to the truth. Philippians 2, 6 to 11. Who being in the form of God, did not count equality with God, something to be grasped. But he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave. Becoming as human being, he was humbler yet, even to accepting death, death on a cross. He is God. He did not count equality with God. He emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, becoming human being, and was humbler yet, even accepting death, death on a cross. That is Jesus Christ for us, the Son of God. For our sake, he embraced suffering, he embraced death. That explains a lot. The transfiguration explains a lot. It's a package. It explains a lot. To help you and me, to help the disciples, to help them in the future, to understand fully that Jesus Christ, nobody, nobody, he surrendered himself. He surrendered himself. Nobody, nobody is capable of arresting him. Nobody is capable of holding him. Nobody is God. To show us how much God loves us, he surrendered himself. He surrendered himself. Does he need for the glory, for the goodness, and for the benefit of us. And that is why the truth, because if you are listening to Jesus, brothers and sisters, we are listening to the truth. We are listening to the truth. And the truth before us today is what is ahead is the cross. What is ahead is the cross. And we must prepare for it. Listening to the word of God, making it our home. We are empowered. There is nothing we cannot face. There is nothing we cannot face. That is empowerment. Empowerment. When we listen to him, it's not passive listening. It is listening actively. In the presence of God, paying attention to the word of God, making his word our own, refreshing our will, refreshing our intellect, feeding our soul, transforming our lives. And that is the only way we can face the future. We can face what lies ahead. And that is why at this time, brothers and sisters, this second week, second Sunday, we must stay so close to Jesus. We are going to listen to him. Do we have Bible 
at home? Do we have Bible at home? When last did we open the Bible? When last did we open the Bible? Uh, the Bible at home? When last do we open it or did we open it? Sharing the word of God? Dad, mom, and children. Or we placed it just to design the corner. Anybody that comes in will say, wow, this is a Christian hope. It carries a big function there. That we have crucifix on our door. It's not for dressing. It's not for design. It means a lot. Brothers and sisters in Christ, this period of Lent is a period of spiritual exercise. Stations of the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise thee. Because by the holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Does it make meaning, any meaning to us? These are occasions of encounter. Prayer, fasting, and alms giving. They are very, very important this time. They are very, very important this time. These are occasions we listen to Jesus. They are very, very important. The discipline. The discipline. Because the more we listen to Jesus, the more we forget ourselves. The more we listen to Jesus, the more it takes over. The more we listen to Jesus, the more our selfishness dies. Selfishness dies. It is very, very important because what lies ahead, we cannot escape it. It is inevitable. And we need to listen to him to be empowered so that we can face it. And we can conquer it. Because the cross is the victory. Victory. The cross is the victory. We can always overcome. We can always overcome. It is a mandate. And that is why at this time we need to stay so close to Jesus. Because the devil is a liar. The flesh is powerful. If you cannot beat them, you join them. The word is powerful. And the devil, Satan, the heart is very deep, very far. <laughs> I smile, but you don't know what I'm thinking. It's very powerful. Where are you going to? I'm going to the Bronx. To Brooklyn. We cannot see the heart. Only God sees it and it must be surrendered to God. Total, absolute surrender. Surrendering everything to God. We cannot do it. And the world we live today, this present world is very, very sophisticated. One of the problems is technology. It has multiplied pleasure. But it has not even raised any joy for anyone. The more we go into it, you look back, you've really moved far. And we are so preoccupied that we don't even have time for ourselves anymore. And we don't have time to listen to God. I'm busy. Brothers and sisters, this time is a time to stay so close to Jesus. Because Satan is moving, prowling around like a running lion, looking for somebody to devour. Stand up to him, strong in faith. And that is why we need to listen to Jesus, to listen to the truth, to strengthen our faith. Because what lies ahead is the cross. Brothers and sisters in Christ, 
How important is God in our lives? How important, how ready are we to embrace? How ready are we to embrace the cross? We cannot run away from the challenges of life. We cannot. Loss, losing jobs, losing opportunities, losing relationship, failures, setback. We want to be disciplined. There is something that is really pulling us back. We just want to do the will of God. We just want to embrace, but something is really pulling us back. And we want to be disciplined. One of it is time, time, time. This what we call time. Time is so powerful. I will do it tomorrow. We procrastinate. I will do it tomorrow. Tomorrow. You see? I will do it tomorrow. Before you know it, tomorrow is here. Oh, I will do it tomorrow, 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock is here. Go loan. Borrow money. If we borrow January first, before you know it, it is December. Go to payback. Time moves so fast. We want to be disciplined. Disappointment in love, disappointment in friendship, health issues. These are challenges of life. Crisis, finances. These are challenges of life. We cannot run away. The more we listen to Jesus, brothers and sisters, the more we are aware. Before Mass this morning, Father says something, well, at the back, he says something. How you will be surprised how little things affect people. I was paying attention. He said, how little things affect people. It's a very deep statement. And most times we do not pay attention. We only pay attention to ourselves. And that is why, as Jesus Christ is moving to Jerusalem, we must stay so close. In solidarity. Remember, he is going to Jerusalem for your sake, for my sake. Why will I stand aloof and pretend as if I do not know he is going there for my sake? If Jesus is not giving up on you and me, why should we give up on one another? Because to deny brothers and sisters is to deny Jesus at this time. Is to pretend not to see. Is to be insensitive. It's very, very important, brothers and sisters. If that is the only thing, if that is the only thing that we can overcome this time, it is a noble thing. How am I a body on my brother? How am I a problem on my brother or my sister? How am I a body? Is it that I am a blessing or I'm a body? Are we sensitive? If that is the only thing that we can overcome this time, it is a noble thing, it is a great thing. Because we are journeying with Jesus. We, I didn't say I, we are journeying with Jesus. And if we are journeying with Jesus, we are searching for the truth together. You are searching for the truth. I am searching for the truth. When you pay attention, pay attention on Jesus. Don't pay attention on me. Look at Jesus. I will look at Jesus. We will surely meet at the same point. Don't look at me. I am not looking at you. Let us look at Jesus. If we look at Jesus, we will meet at the same point. And brothers and sisters in Christ, we are going to raise intentions of one another to Jesus. And that is why we must work together at this time. It is very, very important. We must work together. We must cooperate. It is not easy. We must help. People are going through crisis. We must support them. We must help. And that is what God wants. And that is why he says, listen to him. Three things are important 
And that is faith, hope, and love. Three things across the readings today. Faith, hope, and love. In the first reading today, the faith of Abraham was put to the test. You know what son meant or a child meant at that time? Now, so great. But looking at the context, God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham, here I'm, I am, he replied. God said, then God said, take your son, Isaac, your only son, your only son, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. When it comes to faith, Abraham is a very good example. Is a very good example. Abraham was blessed because God takes priority in his life. God takes priority in his life. God is first. He took that son and was ready to sacrifice him. And God blessed him. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did, in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendant as countless as the stars of the sky and sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies. And in your descendants, all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. His faith was put to the test. He showed God how much he loved him. Brothers and sisters, as we are going to Jerusalem, prepare for glory. Prepare for glory. This is an example. This is inspiring. Prepare for glory. It is a good thing to be ready. What comes first? Brothers and sisters, our dedication to God, our commitment to God is total. It's not halfway. It's not percentage. It is hundred. It is more than that. Everything must be given. Total surrender. Total surrender. Giving to God everything. It is a beautiful thing to surrender everything to God. To give everything to God. I, I was going back to school many years ago and um, I was with my brother and we are moving from one state to another state. So I took the advantage taking me back to school. So on the way, when we were moving back, traveling back uh, to school, it was on speed, I, mean, I won't say it wasn't too much, not too speeding. Um, but I, <laughs> it wasn't speeding too much anyway, but it was speeding, but not too much. <laughs> yeah. So the wife was in the car, the baby, myself, the um, sister to the wife, and all of a sudden, we had a bus tire, boom, my side. And before you know it, the car swept off the road, turned, somersaulted, with head down, boom, inside the bush. What? I was the first person that came out of the car. I saw the light, just life. 
is so funny. Like a fraction of a second. That is how people die. Just within a fraction of a second, is, the only thing I had is, and that's all. So I came out of the car. I saw people parking immediately, like wanting to help. So I moved to his side, and I wanted to, you know, it's so funny how I would be thinking of, you know, carrying the car off, you know. What? <laughs> so the first thing my brother said, he mentioned the name of his wife. He mentioned the name of his wife. And he said, he mentioned the name and he said, are you okay? <laughs> Later on, it struck me that when this thing happened, the first name he remembered in that car is the name of his wife. Because that is the love of his life. And I said, wow. And you know what? If that wife remembers that he mentioned his name, that I am the first, it is an encounter. It means a lot. And I know in your heart, in my heart, who is the first? Who is the first? God must be the first. God must take priority. It is very, very important today that we listen to him. Because we cannot escape what lies ahead. And for those who listen, the more we listen to him, the more we are aware that we need solidarity with one another. The more we are aware of our nothingness. The more we are aware that this time is a time to be ready to forgive one another. And that is why at this time we must approach confession and ask God for forgiveness. We must pray for forgiveness. And we must be ready to help one another, to support each other and let go. People are going through a lot and we must help one another to overcome so many challenges in our lives. The more we listen to him, brothers and sisters, the more we will say, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all, how will he not also give us everything else along with him? God is not judging anybody. God is not condemning anybody. He is not judging anybody. He is not condemning anybody. You know what God has done? It's like somebody who puts a cough. He's putting himself in a tight corner for you and for me. Because if he doesn't forgive you, if he doesn't forgive me, it becomes injustice on this man. If he doesn't forgive you, if he doesn't forgive me, it becomes injustice. Definitely he's going to forgive and St. Paul says, if God is for you and me, who can be against us? It is a beautiful thing to realize that between his own son, what is the best of God? What do you think is the best of God? Is God. His only begotten son. That is the best of God. His only begotten son. His word. Made flesh. Dwelt among us. And he's saying, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. He's giving us power. He's giving us victory. He's giving us everything. And now he is saying, that is why I talked about my brother, the love of his life. God did not spare his only begotten son for your sake and my sake. And now 
Why, on the way to Jerusalem, we will now remain complacent? Why, on the way to Jerusalem, we will now be hiding? Why, on the way to Jerusalem, we will now be betraying one another? Why, on the way to Jerusalem, we will now be denying one another? Why, on the way to Jerusalem, we will now be selfish? Why, on the way to Jerusalem, we will now disappoint God? If God has done this for us, if for our sake he did not spare his only begotten son, we must be ready. He has given us everything and is showing us that to show, give glory to God, we must be ready to give everything back to him. God has given us everything, we must be, we must be ready to give everything back to him. And how are we going to do that? We must listen. So we pray that the good Lord in his infinite mercy will continue to help us on our journey. We continue to strengthen us on our journey. We must at this time be ready to stay close. The Bible, please open it. When we come to church, let us listen. When we listen, let us place value. Stations of the cross, confession, and Satan, the devil, the heart, deceiving us. We must be ready to overcome. The more we listen to him, the more we are overcomers. And we pray that the good Lord will help us and strengthen us. This time, that we will be ready to suffer with him, to die with him, so that we can share in his resurrection. Then we come to know what has happened today, transfiguration, that we too, can show the glory, the goodness, the love. We can show the glory, the goodness, and the love of God to brothers and sisters, to Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, came down from heaven by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom we have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is our Lord and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. St. Paul assures us that God is for us. Therefore, we give voice to our deeds and hopes, confident that the God who loves will hear us. For the church that God's generosity to Abraham and his descendants might motivate us to share our blessing with those in need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That all the nations on earth may find blessing in their people, as God promised Abraham, and value even the least of them as the handiwork of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That the world may be transfigured by the presence of God, becoming a world of perfect justice, mercy, and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. For those who are preparing for the Easter sacraments, that they might listen to God's beloved Son as they approach their initiation into the church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. For all who 
course, struggling during difficult winter weather, especially those without homes and those who cannot afford to heat their homes adequately. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord our For the souls lost to the coronavirus, that they will find eternal rest and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord our prayers. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all of our intentions spoken and unspoken, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord our prayers. For the sick, we pray for the good health of Patricia Clemens, Larry Bennett, Yvonne Anderson, Leroy Young, Barbara Finch, and Barbara Green. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayers. Faithful God, we look to you in our need and listen closely to, to hear your voice. Bless us as the descendants of your servant Abraham and hear these prayers we make today in the name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. celebration of the Paschal festivities through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right. it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death, 
on the holy mountain, he manifested to them his glory, to show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Listening graciously to the prayers of this family, 
whom you have summoned before you, in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you, as they are passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. divine teaching we dare to say our father who art in heaven our lord be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not to temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord we pray us from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and save from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. <laughs> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the face of the church, and graciously grant every in and unity. In accordance with your will, we live and live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us come find each other the sign of peace.
was searching for vaccination sites. And I was lucky to get the Walgreens, I was at the Walgreens pharmacy. Started from Monday. I was uh, accepting appointments as well as giving out vaccines. Actually, my appointment was never cut off. And the Walgreens is just the one at the corner of the Mountain Bay and uh, Faith Valley. Also, the next community health center right in the Mountain Bay. They are also providing vaccines as well. If you want to get more information, you can call the COVID vaccine number for the UNCE. All that information is in the bulletin. The Prayer Heads wants us to join them.
bow your head and pray for God's blessing. Bless the faithful we pray, O oh Lord, with a blessing that endures forever, and keep them faithful to the gospel of your only begotten Son, so that they may always deserve and at last attain that glory whose beauty is shown in his own body to the amazement of his apostles. To Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Spirit. The Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thank you. Thank you.